Hi, wherever you're watching this, I hope you're doing well. I'm Hari Arakli and this is One Thing Today in Tech. NASCOM, India's biggest technology industry lobby, had their annual flagship conference last week. And every conversation was about artificial intelligence. In this extended edition of One Thing Today in Tech, I bring you a quick chat with NASCOM's president, Devjani Ghosh, who gives us a sense of how India's tech services companies are approaching AI. Well, it's not all about AI, it's all about application of AI, right? right? I think we're finally moving from the peak of AI hype to the valley of reality where people are beginning to focus much more energy and resources on how do you do large scale deployment of AI? What problems do you solve with AI? Where we're really getting the industry startups together to talk about what is needed to solve population scale problems with artificial intelligence. Uh, as far as tech services is concerned, uh, they are the, I would say they are the front and center of the industry. Literally they are because when you look at it, Indian tech services, they are driving the digital transformation for more than 80% of global Fortune 500 companies. They are so important for the existence of these companies and therefore the economy, not just India, but globally. And um, as customers start looking at the impact of AI on their top line, how does AI change their business models? How does AI impact profitability? It is very important for the tech services industry to start thinking about how do you um, transform the entire processes, whether it is supply chain, whether it is customer um, engagement, marketing, et cetera, et cetera, to build that layer of intelligence into it and, and bring in that productivity boost. So it's very interesting times for all of us. Um, we are all learning as we go along. But I think the, the, if for the tech industry, the opportunity ahead is tremendous because every single sector will be looking at an AI transformation, and they are the ones who are going to make it happen. You know, in, when it comes to application of AI, yeah. Um, yeah. as yeah. you said, the largest corporations yeah. are the customers of Indian IT services companies. What are they asking of you? <laughs> From smart supply chains to you know simple examples, how do I personalize uh, my communications? Um, for, for example, a lot of the banks that, had were, that were at the front end of AI application, uh, leveraging the powers of generative AI, are building in customized communications, marketing strategies, uh, which really helps them. Uh, you know, one great example was the CEO giving a personalized message in a video to every single customer. Now, it's not possible for you to have the CEO sit and do that, but you can absolutely build his AI avatar and do that, right? But uh, similarly, another great example is where um, in a bank, uh, you have these wealth managers who work with you. Now, it's very, very difficult for them to know pretty much everything that's going on and all the changes that are happening in the market. But if you build an AI assistant that has all the information and that can work with them to provide that information to the audience, right? So, you know, what AI does is it builds expertise at your fingertips, whatever your field is. And uh, th this is the at, the at the heart of the transformation that I'm talking about. So AI is unique in the sense that it's literally changing everything that it's, uh, it touches. Uh, certainly we, we are seeing that it's having, uh, already having an impact on the industry in terms of the sort of large efforts you all are uh, implementing on skilling and so on. Um, can you give us a sense of um, how it's changing the industry from an insider's perspective? Um, so, so let's, one, um, it's changing core business models right? Um, not just for services, but across industries. Because today, when you are looking at the kind of work that industry is doing, it's no more about building a solution and selling it to multiple customers, but it is about working with the customer to drive end-to-end -end transformations of their business models, 
right? So it's it's a model of co-creation, it's a model of open innovation, um, and it's a model of problem solving that is that is coming together. So that's a huge shift in terms of how we work and the kind of, for example, what does it mean? It means if you're a coder in the early days, your job would be to sit and code, right? Today you have to understand the domain that you're working in. If you're working with a hospital, it's very important for you to build domain expertise so you understand their work, what they do, how, what kind of problems and challenges do they face, and how are you going to build the algorithm or the solutions to help those problems. So domain and technology is coming together, and that's a very big shift that's happening. Because of that, um, and also because of the way technology is evolving, a lot of job roles are changing. Um, skills are therefore changing, because the kind of skills that you need today are very different from the skills for, that you needed yesterday. For example, today for coders, data scientists, one of the most important skills is how good a storyteller you are because it's all about your power to communicate and, and uh, tell the story that, that of, of your data, right? So skills are changing, but I think net-net, we are in an era where um, no matter how much we know, no matter which Ivy League college we have graduated from, none of us will ever know enough. And I think we have to, we are really getting into an era where continuous learning is not just a good thing to talk about, but it's becoming an absolute basic requirement for survival. Do, do you see it, um, do you see AI um, surfacing entirely new business models? Uh, for example, uh, do you see generative AI uh, influence what today is sort of still the bread and butter work of the Indian IT industry, the application development maintenance portion? Um, so, do you see new business models emerging? There will be a lot of new business models emerging or new opportunities, I would say, emerging uh, because uh, AI, the, 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 see the, I mean, let's, let's, let's talk about machine learning, right, which is the science behind AI. When you look at machine learning, today you are able to build in capabilities to, to solve for much more than you've been so far been able to solve for. So because you're able to solve for much more, the data is getting richer. You have more data to throw at it. Uh, you have more compute to throw at it. So you're able to build much more smarter uh, tools and capabilities, right? So therefore, you're definitely able to solve for a lot more, whether it is in how you engage with your customers, whether it is going back to your product design or development, right? So there are a lot of new op opportunities that are definitely emerging for the tech services and for product um, companies. Uh, but again, it comes down to the capabilities that you are building and um, it's technology is democratized. It's it's a commodity today. You have access to it. I have access to it. Um, the difference is um, how can I use it, or how how much better can I use it compared to what you are doing, right? And that's where the the people factor still is very important in our industry. Can you explain that a bit when you say people factor is still important? I mean, it probably sort of goes to the heart of uh, your effort. Just want to get a better sense of what you mean by this. It's what ultimately AI is a tool. Let's not forget that. Despite all the global narrative we hear about AI becoming um, almost human-like, uh, I do not believe in that and I don't think the data shows that that's happening, right? AI is still a tool, a very intelligent tool, a very capable tool. It is up to us humans to figure out how do we want to use this tool and what problems do we want to solve with it. So the human angle or the hum human importance is still extremely important. And somehow in the global narrative, we are completely underestimating the role of humans. And I don't know why, and it makes no sense. And I think uh, this is what Dr. Fei-Fei Li, who was the first speaker today, talked about, which is uh, the role of human becomes even more important in the AI era because we have to decide how we want to use it. It's the decisions that we are taking today that will shape the future of AI and our future, right? And that's why I said the people factor in our industry is very, very important because differentiation between companies will not come from the technology. 
differentiation will come from the use of the technology. Mm. Yeah, in fact, it started out uh, by sort of reframing the whole narrative in terms of application of AI. And, and I, would, I would imagine that's even more relevant in the Indian context, much of the fundamental technology in AI uh, still comes from the US or EU and, and correct me if I'm wrong, probably not so much from India. But certainly you have uh, a $250 billion industry that is you know, a master of de delivering these applications. On the one hand, while your customers are largely in the uh, richer economies, on the other hand, over the last decade at least, you have engaged uh, very deeply with the uh, startups in this country who are capable of, increasingly capable of delivering software products and solutions. There's India Stack and all of that. Uh, you're someone who can give us a sense of how you're marrying these two things uh, and, and what we can expect to see as a result. Mm -hmm. So going back to your first question, right? Does US have an advantage? Absolutely, absolutely. They invested in it big time. They invested early um, and they're definitely reaping the benefits today. So they absolutely have an advantage. Does it mean it's too late for countries like India? Absolutely not. Because this is a marathon. It has just got started. And I think India has shown that it can be very creative when it comes to leapfrogging. We've shown that with DPI and, and, and other technologies. Now, what is required when you think of the AI value chain, right? I, I broadly think of it in four phases. Um, at the top end, you have the, the companies that really control the infrastructure, cloud, GPU, compute, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's where US is very, very strong because of a few come big tech, which is really, I mean, they've done a fantastic job of investing in the infrastructure. Then you come down and you have companies that are using these infrastructures to build out the models, right? Then you have companies that are leveraging these models to build vertical applications to solve for big problems. And then you have at the last line, you have companies or startups that are building applications to, to go around a lot of this, the models, right? Uh, an application typically is in chat GPT, GPT is the model and the chat interface that you have is the application, right? So where are we today as far as India is concerned? Now, uh, when it all started, the generative AI hype, India was very much at the beginning phase where a lot of our startups were building uh, wrappers uh, or applications um, around models. And I think we've made very good progress. Um, in fact, today itself, one LLM got launched at NTLF, Hanuman, uh, by um, a professor in uh, IIT Bombay, Professor Ganesh. We are, Sarvam has got, you know, they, they have launched their, their LLM. So we are definitely moving up the value chain where we are now building models. Right. Um, I think ultimately we will see two areas of focus in India. You will see a few companies, not all, but you will see a few companies investing in building out large language models in India. It's already happening and you will see these models come out. And it's very important because otherwise we we tend to lose control of our own culture, our language, the way we speak, all of that will be gone. So we have to do it. And government too is going to have a role to play here. Then you're going to have a very large sector of the industry, primarily whether it's services or startups, who will use these models but build vertical applications or solve, you know, it's, it's what we call fine tuning of these models to build vertical applications. And you will have startups who are building wrappers too, right? So you will see that, but currently we are at sort of phase one. I think we are now ready to move to phase three. Um, and hopefully at some point in the future, we will also see Indian cloud companies um, and maybe GPU companies, but that's going to be a while. Um, but, but we are moving up the value chain. What can we do? Um, and you mentioned briefly that the government will have a role. Um, uh, in, in the current context of much of the technology um, having been developed and in the control of largely private companies in the US and some in the EU, um, what's the sort of playbook that you all are thinking of for India to have a credible role as a force in AI? 
Uh, I mean, I think we've shown some of this in the digital public infrastructure model where yeah. there was a good public-private partnership that's come up with some amazing results. Um, what can we do in AI? I think some brilliant lessons from DPI success that has to be applied not just by India, but I think the world can learn a lot from us. Uh, first, we have shown that population scale is possible when it comes to technology. There are very few countries that have achieved any kind of technology scale that reaches the entire population. We have shown that's possible. And I think as we build for AI, and it's so interesting because when you talk to the startups who are here, all of them are thinking about problems that can have tremendous scale in India. And they're all building for problems. So I think we are fine-tuned in our minds to think about how to solve big problems and how to scale technology. We are not thinking POCs. And I think India will stand out, and I completely believe this, I think India will stand out and India will show the world how AI can be truly scaled. And that's going to be a huge contribution that we make. Now, what, what is needed in order for you to scale technology? You need people to trust it, very simply put. right? If people do not trust your technology, it's not going to scale. And I think, once again, there are tremendous lessons from India on how to build trustworthy technology. You'll be amazed to see how how much Indians trust technology, especially I think this is a DPI phenomena, but we are not afraid of technology. We trust technology. And I think this is something the world needs to learn from because the trust comes from a few things. The trust comes from building an open ecosystem where you don't have uh, maybe one or two dominant players. You have an open ecosystem where everybody comes to play. And this is what DPI did. You know, government is building the highways and then inviting industry to come and play. Innovate and whoever innovates better or faster wins. And I think that's the same model that we have to take to AI now, is how do you build ecosystem-led open uh, frameworks, open solutions, because that's where trust really comes into play, right? How do you ensure that when you're thinking about security, you are thinking um, security from start, security by design versus an afterthought. Um, how do you ensure that ease of use becomes um, uh, so ingrained into what we do that your technology is truly inclusive from start? Um, you know, you, when you're building it, you have to think of the last woman, um, you know, who's, who's there in a tier two small village city, et cetera. Can she use the technology, which is exactly what we've done with UPI, right? Can she use the technology or not and then scale up? That innovation model is very difficult, by the way. The Western model is, is you think for the top and then you figure out how to scale down. We've done just the opposite, much harder, much, much, much harder. But what it does is it builds that trust, it builds that inclusion, and this is where scale comes in. AI's biggest problem is going to be scale because it, you have to stick the technology to scale to get the real benefits. And I think this is India's opportunity to show the way.